Hello everyone and welcome to my kingdom. The weather's warming up and spring is right around the corner. If you have your own house plants, I'm sure a lot of you have noticed that the plants are growing a lot faster and you're having to water a lot more often too. And what that means to me is that it's grow season. And for some of you houseplant people, it also means chop and prop season. At first, I didn't really have the heart to like cut up all my plants because I like to see them grow big. But with some time, when you chop and prop your plants, you have more plants to grow. So depending on my plant, I do actually prop them throughout the year including winter. My plants don't have too much of a slowdown season because in my room I do have artificial lighting, heat, and humidity on them. But since spring is somewhat universal for everyone, I figured I'd do a quick little tutorial on how I prop my plants. In this video, I'm going to specifically focus on potho since it's one of the most like widely available plants and it's one of the easiest plants to prop to. It's going to be a pretty quick video. I'm just going to show you guys um, what to look for in the plant before you prop it and what materials you need. There's a few methods that you can do but my favorite is water propping because I find it the easiest and it's kind of the one that requires the least amount of care too. When you cut plants, um, there's a few different medias that you can use which include like sphagnum moss, perlite, leca, but in terms of easiness, I find water the best one because you don't have to water your props and all you have to do is change out the water once in a while. I'm going to be propagating my mandula pothos which is right here. It's kind of bright so you can't see it but I'll bring you guys up there. So I have all the supplies that I need which include jars of water and scissors that I already sanitized. You don't have to sanitize it but it prevents like the spread of bacteria from plant to plant or just bacteria that was growing on the surface of your scissors. You don't necessarily need fancy glass jars either. I actually bought these on sale. You can just use a, a cut up McDonald's cup just like I use for the painted lady philodendrons. So like I said super easy. It just roots in the water and you change it once in a while. So this method actually works for a good amount of other plants, but not all plants propagate the same way that pothos do. So if you're going to cut up your other plants, I suggest looking that up just to make sure that whatever you're cutting off can actually grow something new. Alright, let's get to it. So there are a lot of ways that you can like propagate the plant itself, which includes cutting up a whole vine and then just sticking the whole vine in water, or you can do leaf by leaf. But the number one thing you're looking for are nodes, and I'll show you guys what a node is in a second, but that's what you want to see to make sure that the plant can grow a new plant from itself. So right here is just like a midsection you can see, but these little nubs right here are what you call nodes. Generally, each leaf should have at least one. Some will have multiple depending on the maturity and just the age of the plant. This one has two right here. And then there's just a ton on this one. So when I say you can cut leaf by leaf or the whole vine, like this one right here, since there's a node here, you can cut here, you can cut here, you can cut here, you can cut here, and that will give you four separate propagations. If you wanted to, you could just cut here and then the plant will continue to grow. So where I'm taking my propagations from is down here. So with potos, it doesn't only grow from the vine, sometimes it activates growth points just like this. And I have cut a few from here and it just keeps growing from the bottom so I just keep taking them from there. So I'll be taking this one, this one, and this one. I personally like to wait until there's at least three leaves to take the propagation from there. What I have noticed is that it still grows at a pretty fast rate after it roots instead of having a little stunted period from like only taking one leaf and then having to grow a new growth point. So I will be taking from right here. There's a little bit of an overlapping node but I'm just gonna kind of shimmy in there until it gives me what I want. So here is one. I'm just gonna put that down real quick. Then here is the second point. As close to the base as you can. And the last one is right here. And you can kind of see what I mean by it keeps giving too. So I've already cut three from here. So this is the second round of three. And then I have a growth point. Let me focus it. I have a growth point right here, right here. There's this one. There's this one right here. So it just keeps giving. Here are my three props that it took. If I really wanted to, I could 
cut them up even more and make nine to ten props out of this but they tend to grow better when you give them some more room so these are the nodes the little brown nubs you just want to make sure each plant has them before you cut it off super easy you just put these into the water and change out the water once or twice a week so this method is very easy and it has a really high success rate but it's not foolproof Sometimes plants do rot and that's just the chance you take when you propagate plants. Some people like to leave them out for a day or so just to let the, the cut end callus over but I just dunk them in. I haven't had an issue with it. One quick thing I do want to let you guys know so you don't panic is like these dry sheets when you do water prop them sometimes they get fuzzy and fall off but that's not an issue. Just change out the water. The one thing you don't want happening are the nodes rotting off that significantly like reduces the chance of the plant rooting but if that does happen I say just wait unless the whole plant has rotted then there's still a chance that it can grow roots from other places like the other nodes so just simple as that I'm just gonna put them all in their little water cup and these are the three propagations that I have so you're just gonna leave them where they get light and after a while they should start rooting for you it does take a lot of patience. I've seen some plants root within a week and I've had some plants take months to even start growing roots. But it is all about patience and then you got a ton of free more plants. So these are freshly propped plants. Um, I have one over there that I'm going to show you guys real quick. I think I cut that one a couple months ago and I'm going to show you the root growth that it's got in that time. So I actually decided to just grab them all. <laughs> I have this one right here. It's in the same cup of water just inside the jar. And then this one in my little moose pot. And these are the roots that it's grown. It's a little slow, but it is progress. And I also have, this is my favorite one as I've potted it already and gave it a pull. This one that I've transferred to soil. Ooh, that's important. So one important thing that I also don't want to leave out is when you do transfer them to soil, you want to keep the soil like almost wet, barely like very moist for the first week or two so the roots can transition since they're used to being fully submerged in water. And then after that, you water it regularly as you would any of your other pothos. This one's growing in a new leaf right here. And I think that covers all the basics. So if you really want to, you can chop up the entire plant as long as each leaf has a node. Just remember that not all of them are going to make it and it's not always your fault. So I started off with technically four vines and now I have seven. <laughs> Mandula pothos is my absolute favorite variety of pothos. Um, I just got a global green and it's up there but the variation on mine isn't as um, poppy, poppy, prominent. <laughs> It's not as, um, it doesn't have as much of a contrast. I know it's green, but I was hoping for a lighter shade of green. It might just be my growing conditions. I'm trying hard not to keep all of them, but I've kept every single propagation that I've taken so far. One more tip. Um, some people like to put the jars on top of a heat mat. Warmth, humidity does help them root faster. In terms of plant people that also have fish tanks, you can just dunk it into your fish tank and it does Increase the chance of them rooting because of the oxygen and the nutrients provided in the tank. It's a side note, but um, Adansonii's are harder to root than Pothos. Like I've had very slim luck with Adansonii's, but this one I rooted inside my shrimp tank and it rooted within like the first week. I've already potted it as well. So I think I included everything that I wanted to say. If I left something out or you have questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get back to them best I can. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something. If you did, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until then, I'll see you guys next time. Bye everyone.